and you repent, you turn from your sin, and you turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, he said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? He said, Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind, nor thieves, nor uh, covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And so Paul, the Apostle Paul is basically saying that you could not be a fornicator and a Christian simultaneously. The Apostle Paul is saying that you could not be an idolater and a Christian simultaneously. Jesus is trying to tell us, the Word of God is telling us that you could not be an adulterer and a Christian simultaneously. You could not engage in premarital sex and be a Christian. You could not cheat on your spouse and be a Christian. You cannot serve any other God besides the Lord Jesus Christ and go to heaven and come to Christ while, you're, while you have a chance, while His mercy is still outstretched toward you. And so now we're looking and we're seeing what the Bible says about repentance. We're finding out what the Bible says about sexual sins. We're understanding now that you cannot be a Muslim and go to heaven. You cannot be a Buddhist and go to heaven. You cannot be a Hindu and go to heaven. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Sounds like Christ is pretty intolerant, I think. And so we're living in a church world and a society where the preacher says, well, if you get baptized when you're free, shake the preacher's hand, pay your tithes, you can go to heaven. Well, that's not what the Bible says. Jesus tells us very plainly that the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. There's that word repent again. Now, the Apostle Paul, not only does he say fornicators shall not inherit the kingdom of God, not only will idolaters not inherit the kingdom of God, nor adulterers, but he said the effeminate. He said the homosexual will not inherit the kingdom of God. So the sodomite will not inherit the kingdom of God, nor abusers of themselves of mankind. And so you cannot be a homosexual and a Christian simultaneously. But I've got good news tonight. The Lord Jesus Christ can wash away your sins. The Lord Jesus Christ can make you a new creation. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The Bible tells us very plainly that if you die in your sins, you could not go to that celestial kingdom called heaven. You will die and go to hell if you don't repent and turn your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can save you. He is the only hope. He is the only way. There is no other way. And so we need to understand that while you listen to your rock and roll music, and you bang your heads, you drink your whiskey and your liquor, you're doing so all the way to a ring and fire. Why would you choose to be lost for eternity when the Lord Jesus Christ has offered you salvation? Bible said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, you shall find rest unto your soul. And so his arms are outstretched, his mercy is outstretched. Bible tells us in Titus chapter 3, the Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy and Savior, for the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly. And so we need to understand that it is by the Lord Jesus Christ and His mercy and grace that we are saved. And the Bible said, in the third chapter of St. John, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The Bible tells us, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Listen carefully on what Jesus said. He said, this is the condemnation that life hath come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. 
This is what Jesus said. Everyone that doeth, that, 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 that hateth the light, that either cometh to the light, the light, because their deeds will be reproved. And so you need to understand that men hate the light, they hate the gospel, they hate the Spirit of God because it shines upon their sins and reveals what is in their hearts. I want you to know tonight that God is alive and He is the great judge of the universe and He will have no mercy at judgment. The mercy that God has bestowed upon you, He showed upon the cross of Calvary when He sent His Son to die for you. And so why don't you come to Jesus, why don't you repent and let Him give you a new heart? The Bible said Jesus would take out the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. He would take out the old wicked stony heart and give you a new heart. The Bible tells us that very plainly. The Bible tells us He can give us a pure mind. And that's what we need out here. A society that's so hooked on pornography and addiction to sex and rock and roll and all of these things and your gangster rap. And listen to this and you listen to that. This unholy music and that unholy music. You never glorify God. Never read the Word of God, and so your heart and your mind is defiled, your conscience is defiled, and the Bible says that you can actually get to a place for where your conscience is seared with a hot iron. You have no feeling, you pass feeling. In other words, you can sin and there's no guilt. You see, that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to have guilt, the conscience. is supposed to speak into your heart and into your life and say what you're doing is wrong. And the blood of Jesus Christ washes away those sins, and therefore the guilt is removed. Obey. His servants you are, to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And so you need to know that. Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. You need to understand that. The Bible said, in this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. He that doeth not righteousness is not of God. It's very simple. We live in a church world where the preacher has told the people that God doesn't care what you do. He doesn't care what you wear. He doesn't care what you say. He doesn't care where you go. He doesn't care how you preach yourself. He can drink. He can smoke and all of these things. And I'm going to warn you tonight, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, the Apostle Paul said, Know you not that ye are the temple of God, and the temple of God was in you. The Bible said, The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Bible said, Whosoever defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. And so you need to take care of your temple, for it is supposed to be the temple of God. But instead of that, you have made it, instead of a temple, you have made it a carnival, you have made it an amusement park. That's not the will of God in any man's life. It is the will of God in our life to live holy and righteous. And those who are victims of sin, you are rebels. And you need to repent. You need to change your allegiance to the Lord. You need to come to Him before it's everlastingly too late. He will not spare at the judgment. He will cast your soul into hell. The whole time you're going to say what nobody told you. And you know what's going to happen? The Lord is going to remind you about that night in Ebor City that the preachers declared the word of God unto you. There's only one way to be free of sin. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, the Bible said if we say we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son cleanseth us from all sins. And so it is the blood of Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you how merciful God is. I'm going to tell you how loving God is. The Bible said in Romans 5, that eight and 9, that God committed His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being just now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. And so now you're seeing that even when you're in sin, Christ died for you. That's why there will be no mercy and judgment for you. That's why you're not going to be able to plead the fifth when you come to God in judgment. That's why you're not going to be able to try to uh, and weasel your way out. That's why when you stand before God in judgment, the, the cover's going to be pulled back and there's going to be no mercy and judgment. Because how much greater gift could have God gave you than His Son, Jesus Christ, would die on the cross of Calvary? 